If you were a child in the 1990s, there was no way you hadn't heard of Pokemon. Pokemon was a cultural phenomenon, landing on my elementary school playground with meteoric fury. Pokemon, like few other intellectual properties of my youth, was ubiquitous within the shared experience of children who grew up in the 90s. There was the TV show, with its absolutely killer theme song and charming animation, and there were the trading cards, with their whimsical art and captivating bits of flavor text. Pokemon was a universal language amongst kids my age. It was the perfect icebreaker. What's your favorite Pokemon was to the Southern California playground as what's your sign is to any number of modern dating apps. Though I'd argue that favorite Pokemon is a far better indicator of life mate than astrological symbol. Heck, back then you couldn't even throw a rock without realizing it was actually your friend's plush Geodude. But chief amongst my fascinations with Pokemon were the video games. First on the Game Boy and then on the Game Boy Advance. Pokemon was and is what we could broadly define as a turn-based strategy game, similar to chess in how its gameplay was structured. Like the many pieces on a chessboard, certain types of Pokemon were better at countering others of different types, so it was always a matter of trying to be one step ahead of your opponent, anticipating their next move and calculating which Pokemon you'd send into the fray to secure victory. Truly, the combat system of the Pokemon games is so dense with tactical variants that it requires near doctoral levels of study to fully understand the depths of the possibilities of its systems. But even so, it was still fun and accessible for such an impatient youth as I was. And yet, looking back, it's kind of wild that I enjoyed the Pokemon games at all. Now, I've been thinking a lot recently about the kinds of games I've been enjoying the past few years now that I'm a full-grown adult with rent to pay, and I've noticed one particularly interesting trend. Now, when I was a kid, I found myself more often than not playing games that were fast. Racing games like Lego Racers, Mario Kart, Need for Speed, Star Wars Racer Revenge, and uh, shooters like 007 Nightfire, Halo, and Medal of Honor. But as I've grown older, I've found myself more and more drawn to slower games, specifically turn-based strategy titles like the classic Pokemon games. And why? Well, this video will be my best effort to interrogate my own history with these genres to try to trace the path from Speed Freak to Slow Mosey. Now, when I was younger, the two most popular genres, at least by my juvenile observations, were real-time strategy games and first-person shooters. Now, I talked about this briefly in our previous subpixel video on the death or supposed death of the RTS genre, which, if you haven't seen, check the description below, but I want to expand on it here. If one of my childhood friends had an older brother or even a dad who played video games, those games were always StarCraft or one of the real-time Warcrafts. If ever, as I passed by a half-closed door and caught a fleeting glance past the hunched shoulders of an Elder Games enthusiast, bathed in the light of a humming CRT as harsh shadows splashed across the walls, Undoubtedly, I would observe the masterful oversight of myriad tiny armies, guided by those whose minds contained a patience I myself would not master for many more years. As was the way of youth, my interest in video games came with an unquenchable desire for immediacy. I wanted the game now, and I wanted to experience it right now. Real-time strategy was slow, a, a sluggish genre for fools. One might need to wait whole minutes after giving an order to see the fruits of such orders bloom. Turn-based games were even slower, utterly monotonous titles that had the audacity to force the player to wait infinite waits until the game's enemies decided they were once again content to let the player pursue another action. 
This is also precisely why, though I enjoyed my Lord of the Rings chess set I had as a kid, I never liked playing chess because I wanted whoever I was playing opposite to just get on with it already and move their next piece. I was not about it. Now, my first personal computer was a Dell Inspiron 1100, a mammoth slab of a machine that I assume was the approximate density and weight of a dying star. In an effort to squeeze some sort of positive interaction from my allotted amount of daily screen time, my parents bought me Civilization II, which I assume had been selected because from it I might learn some amount of real-world history. Now, I played enough Civilization II in the following weeks and months that when I closed my eyes at night I could still hear Beethoven's Ode to Joy ringing deep within my skull. But even after all that time, I never... I, I never really enjoyed Civilization. It was just too slow. Conversely, with first-person shooters or racing games, the moment I pulled the trigger or pressed the accelerator, the game responded. It was this antipathy toward the delayed gratification of turn-based experiences that I set my sights away from these slower forms of digital entertainment, with two notable exceptions. Pokemon, as we've already talked about, and Advance Wars. Now, Pokemon was and would continue to be an influential force in my life, but in the final years preceding my teens, a different itch began to fester along the skin of my video game playing fingers. One that Pokemon could not scratch. Luckily, my cousin had the balm for this new irritation, Advance Wars. Advance Wars arrived in my life at the exact point I, as I assume is the case with many young boys, began to develop a superficial fascination with war. I'd recently inherited a massive collection of National Geographic VHS tapes from my late great-grandfather, many of which documented the history of various battles and campaigns of World War II. Now, my young mind could not properly process the tragedy contained within those tapes, and instead latched on to the mechanisms of that war. The tanks, the boats, and the planes. These were the things I wanted to know more of. Now, another thing I've mentioned before in these videos is that uh, my grandfather worked for North American Rockwell, then known as North American Aviation, as an aviation engineer, on a number of projects, some of which, according to recent conversations with the man himself, are still classified. Now, if the name North American doesn't ring any bells, let's walk through some of their greatest hits. We're talking the P-51 Mustang. We're talking the B-25 Mitchell. The F-86 Sabre the heckin' X-15, and the B-1 Lancer. And though my grandfather was already retired by the time I was born, because of his history in the world of aviation engineering, he owned many books on the design and history of these machines. Books I'd spend hours poring over and vandalizing any chance I could get. So one weekend when my aunt and uncle brought their family from Northern California to our home in Torrance uh, to use our residence as a beachhead from which they could more easily travel to and from the Disneyland parks in Anaheim. And my cousin brought with him a game where I could command my own little World War II-esque fighting force. I dove in head first. Advance Wars was a new experience. Even though it was turn-based like Pokemon, it was a different tactical flavor. I had to worry about terrain and troop placement. I could suddenly see why all the older game likers in my life had gravitated toward the omniscient command games of StarCraft and the like. For years, the only exposure I had to Advance Wars was that weekend, but it stuck with me. And so my journey through video games continued. More Halos were released, Call of Duty went into orbit, Konami kicked Kojima to the curb, skydiving gunslingers sought out poultry-based meals, and I began my first forays into the world of games journalism. One of the most significant projects I had the opportunity to work on was a documentary on Battle Chasers Night War from Austin-based developers and Darksiders alums Airship Syndicate. 
I was able to travel to the studio with the production team, record a few days of interviews and B-roll with the devs, and then it was up to me to stitch everything together into a coherent story. Part of the post-production process was capturing video of Battle Chasers. I'd bought the game before the trip, knowing I'd want to get video of gameplay right after I got back. Now once I sat down to capture gameplay, I suddenly found that 8 hours had blown by. All in all, I recorded 20 hours of Battle Chasers gameplay for that roughly 45 minute documentary, and I loved every minute of it, even completing on and rolling credits on the game after the documentary was wrapped. I realized that after years of filling my gut with all sorts of first and third person action games, I was once again yearning for the thoughtful meandering of turn-based combat. Until that very moment that I got into that first combat screen of Battle Chasers, I was still, by and large, under the impression that turn-based games were, on the whole, boring. Now I know I'd, I'd heard for years people sing praises of games like Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, and a, a million other RPGs, JRPGs, and turn-based military tactics games, but because of the preconceptions of my youth, I had never sought out these turn-based experiences. If they had stumbled into my hands, as had Pokemon and Advance Wars, then sure, I'd, I'd give them a chance, but this was the first time I found myself actively seeking out more games like Battle Chasers. But why the sudden shift in perspective? I certainly had not abandoned my fast games, but I had an epiphany about those games too. What few shooters and other action games I'd purchased in the past few years all had one of two things, or ideally two of two things. Excellent combat mechanics, and or a narrative that I could sink my teeth into. And there are tons of modern shooters out there that I haven't ever touched, and probably never will, instead opting to partake of a slightly more refined selection of titles I know will be immediately gratifying to me in one form or another. But for as deep as the systems of these games might be, even the most dense titles of the genre lacked the tacticality of these new games I found filling my library. Yeah, as hard as Destiny may be sometimes, if your gun has a big enough number attached to it, you can, with enough effort, kill any enemy in the game. But in a game like Darkest Dungeon, you'll need to be a little more thoughtful than number go up, enemy go down. Now, as one tangential point of interest, my newfound fascination with turn-based games hit so hard that Darkest Dungeon ended up being my number 8 pick for top 10 games of the previous decade. The months and years that followed working on that Airship Syndicate documentary would see me downloading even more games like Battle Chasers, with Wargroove, Into the Breach, and Octopath Traveler occupying more of my waking hours that is probably healthy or responsible. I even tracked down a Pokemon Gold cartridge to play on my wife's Game Boy Color, just so I could truly relive that elementary school experience. Cyndaquil, obvious starter. Why are you going to pick anybody else? He's just the cutest thing on God's green earth. So what am I trying to say with this video? Well, I guess just that you know, tastes change with age. Now, when I was a kid, I used to dip carrots in ketchup. Now, at the ripe age of 28, I wouldn't be caught dead with carrots in my house. Now, when I was a kid, I thought turn-based games were a waste of my time. Now, I know that no games are a waste of my time. Video games are awesome. Kids are stupid. So if, if these stories of my upbringing have sparked any thoughts in your own mind of genres you'd like to give a second chance, you know, let me know in the comments. Video games, as I just said, are awesome. And there's so many for us to enjoy. Huh, I just had a dream that you didn't like, subscribe, and comment on our videos. Wouldn't that be a tragedy? You should do that so you always know when we have a new video out. Do it now. Good night. <laughs>